warm good evening and welcome to TVC News. Our top stories tonight. Zanzibar and World Bank set for enhanced cooperation. Tanzania and Japan to explore innovation potentials. For the next 30 minutes, you'll be with me, Rose Shire. You can also follow us live via our YouTube channel, TBC Online, and get all the latest news through our Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter pages at TBC Online. The President of Zanzibar and the Chairman of the Revolutionary Council, Dr. Hussein Ali Mwini, has met and held talks with the World Bank Country Director, Nathan Belete, and his delegation. Dr. Mwini has congratulated the bank for supporting Zanzibar in various major projects, especially the electricity, health and education projects. We are very happy that you are into supporting Zanzibar to, to, to come up with the new transmission lines across the islands. And I think this will definitely help us to bring in more power and to become power independent in the long run. Uh, the other projects on health, uh, reproductive health, neonatal health and um, adolescent health, all that is highly appreciated. We, we believe that health uh, plays a big role in economic development. So uh, the support that we get from your uh, bank in health and education, for that matter, is highly appreciated. We do have a crisis when it comes to education because the numbers of uh, students being enrolled on year-to-year -year basis um, oh, is much more than uh, the classroom can accommodate at the moment. Dr. Mwini has also explained to the delegation the concept of blue economy, which is Zanzibar's main economic policy, and he added that the government has completed the construction of the Unguja International Airport, and now efforts have been directed towards building Pemba International Airport. For his part, Mr. Belete vowed to continue to enhance cooperation between the two country, the two parties. Uh, for the opportunity to uh, enhance our cooperation through uh, a new partnership, a renewed partnership in the education sector, uh, which is uh, going to be done on the sidelines of this uh, audience with you. Uh, I had really hoped for the opportunity to, to meet you first before starting more formal uh, discussions here. So uh, on behalf of uh, uh, the World Bank, I'd like to thank you for giving us this audience. The Japanese government is ready to explore ways to foster innovation, science and technology in Tanzania in treasuring 60 years of bilateral cooperation between the two countries. The remarks were made by Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA, Representative Dr. Yamamura Naofumi in Dar es Salaam. He was addressing journalists on the forthcoming Tanzanian-Japan Innovation Forum, which is themed innovation for national growth and sustainable development. During the forum, participants will have opportunity to hear and learn some secrets behind Japan's modernization experience through the lectures, which, which will be uh, given by some Japanese professors distinguished experts in the fields of innovation and some members of the JICA alumni. Dr. Naofumi insisted that Tanzania has potentials of nurturing youth to be the best in innovation and technology to stimulate modernization of the nation. On his part, Dr. Salvatore Nyanjo, who is the director and vice chancellor's office of the University of Dar es Salaam, says the university is ready to collaborate with other institutions around the world for the betterment of the nation. Institutions within and, out, uh, and outside Tanzania. So for us, uh, holding a two-day conference on Japan-Tanzania Innovation Forum is indeed a milestone because it does correspond with the mission of the investor of Dar es Salaam. We therefore look forward uh, to enhancing uh, investor of Dar es Salaam's visibility 
uh, internationalization and exchange endeavors on teaching and learning, uh, research and innovation, and knowledge exchange endeavors. The two days forum, which is expected to be attended by government leaders, researchers, academicians, policy makers, and other local and international stakeholders, look forward to reveal secrets behind Japan's modernization. The forum is expected to start tomorrow, the 9th of February, to the 10th of February at the University of Dar es Salaam. The Tanzania Telecommunications Corporation, TTCL, has signed a non disclosure agreement with the Postal Telecommunications Corporation of the Democratic Republic of Congo in completing the project to connect the Congolese National Telecommunications Network from Kigoma, Tanzania to Kalame in DRC, Congo. Speaking on the signing ceremony, the Director General of TTCL, Engineer Peter Lunga, said the move will enable them to exchange te technical information and start to the construction of important projects, connecting them with other neighboring countries. We have taken steps to collaborate with the Congolese Post and Telecommunication Company in the project to extend optical fiber cable in DRC. It's going to be the first subsea cable in, in, in Lake Tanganyika from Tanzania to Congo, and it's going to be a big door opening cooperation in digital space between Congo and Tanzania. The government of the United Republic of Tanzania has already committed funds to ensure that this project is, is a success. On the part of the Tanzania Postal Corporation Acting Business and Operations Director, Kostin Kasese, says the corporation will facilitate cross-border communications through the postal optical fiber cable network, while the representative of the Office of the Minister of Communications from the Congo DRC engineer Azi Temina Blaze expresses his delight on the agreement. Signed an area of ensuring that all the items which are, thold, are sold in uh, Tanzania Post's online platform can be visible in DRC and the uh, client can buy items from the uh, online platform which we have that has almost uh, 1,207 uh, multi-vendors. So through this platform, we shall enable businessmen in DRC to purchase items through the post platform, and we, Tanzania Post Corporation, we shall be delivering them through the uh, Kalemi port on the cross-border business which we have, as well as the agreement with the Tanzania uh, airline services which we have. Uh, through the Bujumbura, port, Bujumbura uh, airports. I think this NDA and MOU opens the door to a very long-term uh, partnership and a very benefit to both our countries. The National Communication Corridor from Kigoma to Kalame through Lake Tanganyika is expected to be 150 to 160 kilometers long and the construction is expected to start in the fiscal year 2023. The demand for sunflower edible oil from Geita region per year is 14,000 tons, while the, current, the, the region currently produces 1,000 tons. The remarks was made by the Geita Regional Administrative Secretary, Professor Gordias Kayarara, who insisted on increasing the production of sunflower edible oil in the region and boost agricultural sector to bring rele relevant benefits to farmers, consumers and the government. Here is a report by... Nazareth Dekia, read by Faidangaga. It is a meeting that aims to discuss on how the farmers can use sunflower cultivation as an employment opportunity. The regional administration will provide seeds so that we can distribute them to citizens. What is missing is awareness among the citizens, and so we are going to spread awareness among sunflowers farming. Almost 14,007 tons of sunflower is needed in this is domestic market. And we usually produce 1,146 tons. We have a great responsibility to widen the production area. Regional Administrative Secretary Professor Gordias Kahiarara says that effective strategies are needed to raise sunflower crop production. Farmers will not be concerned with where their sunflower is sold. And the buyer should also be sure of the amount of sunflowers he needs and where exactly to get it. 
Therefore, we could come up with the concept of contract farming, and all that we have agreed upon here shall be summed up and presented at the regional level. Some of the sunflower farming stakeholders have set an indicative price. The municipal council has decided to increase the price to 4,500 per kilogram. Our aim is for farmers to buy their produce according to the price on the stickers. Kilolo district residents in Iringa region have expressed their satisfaction with the health services provided by the new district hospital built by the government at a cost of more than 6 billion shillings. Previously, the area did not have a district hospital and therefore its residents, including pregnant mothers, had to follow medical services at the regional referral hospital located 40 kilometers away. Irene Mokalinga reports. Although the construction of some other buildings is still going on, but the hospital have started to offer crucial medical services and the residents of the area are delighted. The services here are good. We are thankful to the government. The services here are so good. For instance, here we have already received the services and we're waiting for the transport to go back home. Explaining to the retired Prime Minister and member of the CCM Central Committee, Mizengo Pinda, who visited the hospital, acting director of Kilolo District Council, Nelson Milanzi, says that since the hospital started providing services last year, the number of infant mortality rate has decreased. This hospital will solve the problem of the increased demand of emergency operation services caused by the high number of pregnant women. The inspection of the hospital is part of the celebrations of the 46th anniversary of CCM Pat, which was held regionally in Kilolo district, witnessing the improvement of many social services for the people. <laughs> We have received 236 workers. They are scattered across the region, and I believe more of them are going to come. But the ones who are present here continue to work hard. Speaking to the residents of Kilolo District, retired Prime Minister Mizengo Pinda, who is also a member of the CCM Central Committee, urges young people to use the current agriculture opportunities provided by the government. <laughs> All this transformation in infrastructure, such as roads, electricity, social services, education, health and water supply, we believe they will transform the lives of the Tanzanians. Earlier, the retired Prime Minister inaugurated the new CCM district offices and asked the members to build solidarity and unity. We should work wholeheartedly. We should work for the public interest. For us to excel, we need to have solidarity. When we reach the 50th anniversary of CCM, we shall have offices in all wards in Iringa. Irene Mwakalinga, TBC, Iringa. Technological advancement and digital system creation has simplified the service delivery and has improved the country-to-country -country connectivity in providing important services. Some Arusha residents thanked the government for improving the IT systems that have helped them make payment online or import products easily without restrictions. Here is a report by Sechelela Kongole and read by Lulua Mohamed. Integrated network systems is said to bring positive changes in the society. The people are delighted of the systems. It can simplify the performance in my business. I can use this technology to distribute goods or to make orders for things that I want. For now, everything is easy. We can buy and pay bills online, such as water and electricity bills. 
While some are aware of the IT systems, heads of public and private institutions, as well as various stakeholders, are meeting in the third meeting, and here the use of IT services is being clarified. Kujenga mifumo ya kisekta, ikiwa ni jitihada za kupunguza urudufu. The response of the public institutions to use this system is still low. So I urge all directors of the public institutions to ensure that their institutions join this system, as well as the authorities in collaboration with public institutions should continue to build sectoral systems as an effort to reduce the duplication of IT systems in public institutions, thus eliminating the need for public institutions to have its own system, especially for institutions whose activities are similar. The inspection of IT systems has been able to determine the threats posed by the use of the internet. The authority has been able to fully manage the security of IT systems and infrastructure and enable the identification of about 459 online security threats in parallel with conducting system inspections and evaluations for various institutions. The Public Service Management and Good Governance Permanent Secretary emphasizes the use of digital systems in carrying out their duties. It is necessary to plan well to ensure that your office and your organizations transform themselves into digital. The experts are meeting to mark 10 years of e-government. The technological advancement incorporated in the National Insurance Corporation, NIC, service delivery has helped the organization grow in faster pace than the previous year. Here is this report by Monica Liampawe, read by Faidangaga. Speaking in Morogoro, Harbert Polepole, acting director of the National Insurance Corporation, says the organization continues to provide education to the community so that they understand the importance of virus insurances provided by the organization to protect themselves from virus disasters when they occur. We conducted a research to find out what our customers want. We realized their biggest complaint is about the payment. Therefore, we managed to solve those claims, but at the same time, we are not owed by any customer. And we believe that this is the only insurance company that can finalize the payment within seven days. And in the future, before July this year, we will be able to pay within three or four days because we are going to help the customers not only on the claims, but also on the follow-up process if he had a challenge. On their part, some agents expressed their expectations after being given education and new methods to serve customers digitally. If the business rises, we believe that we will go beyond borders of Tanzania. The training will change my working style because there are things that I have been doing manually then. I will now start using a new system based on the training that I have received. Mozambique and South Africa are expected to meet at the ministerial level to discuss the most recent attacks against Mozambican citizens near the South African city of Durban. The two countries have put together joint teams to investigate the issue and come up with recommendations to solve the problem facing travelers from Mozambique. Here are more details. Public transporters with Mozambican number plates have stopped traveling between Maputo and Durban using the main road linking the two cities. Some transporters have stopped working altogether and parked their cars. Those who are brave enough to risk traveling prefer to use a detour through Iswatini to avoid the more problematic sections of the road. Only one bus left the park today. It had to go through Swatini to get to South Africa. We had passengers who wanted to travel and we could not leave them here. We don't know yet if it will arrive safely or not. I left Durban yesterday. We didn't see any vehicle with the Mozambican registration number until we reached the border post. At least seven cars belonging to Mozambican citizens were set on fire around Durban, including passenger vehicles and one cargo truck. 
No one was physically injured, but the civil society in Mozambique is worried. This is a very serious violation of human rights of Mozambican citizens. We are talking about the right to freedom of movement from one place to another and also about the right to security, which is a fundamental right. Mozambican and South African authorities have decided to create three high-level technical groups to work on the real causes behind the attacks. The groups began to work towards the end of last week in Maputo. The first team will work on joint operations. Another team will work on investigation, and the third one will work on recovering stolen vehicles. The situation in South Africa has been attended to. The National Commissioner of Police uh, ascended to the area that was affected by violence on Tuesday of the week uh, preceding the incidents that happened in Emanguzi area where the community leaders were approached, addressed to calm the situation. At the ministerial level, the meeting has already been set for this Wednesday. The Mozambican Minister of Home Affairs is already in South Africa. We are really worried. We have immediately contacted the South African counterpart to ask for an urgent meeting to discuss this and other issues. But this is our priority right now. This will be the third time that the chiefs of police from Mozambique and South Africa meet in less than two weeks. That item concludes local news tonight. International news is up next. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has acknowledged that there were some problems in the initial response regarding rescue operation but urged people to stay calm and united. Erdogan made the remarks when visiting the areas worst hit by the Monday's earthquake in Turkey and Syria. The president stated that there were issues at airports and on the roads, but today things are getting easier and tomorrow it will be easier still. Older one has also said to the citizens they should only heed communication from authorities and ignore provocators as thousands of people complain about a lack of resources and slow response by officials. He also promised that new houses will be built and no one will be left on the street. The death toll in Turkey and Syria from the Monday's earthquake has surpassed 11,000 in both countries. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has said that the death toll in the country has reached 8,574, even as rescue workers are continuing to search for victims buried under mountains of rubble. Erdogan... That was International News Sports News. Up next. Confusion has risen again towards the former Newcastle star and Ghana national team player Christian Atsu situation as his agent says the footballer's whereabouts are unknown. A day after it was reported, he was pulled from the rubble of the a building with injuries after the Turkey earthquakes. Ghana forward Atsu plays for Hatay Sport and the club's vice president Mustafa Ozad had said the player was rescued, but they failed to find him in, but they failed to find him in any hospital, which has risen tension of his condition. More than a thousand, uh, eleven thousand people in southern Turkey and northern Syria are now known to have been killed. Atsu, 13, played 107 games for Newcastle and had spelled. Spells with Chelsea, Everton, and Bournemouth. That marks the end of our news bulletin for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Rose Shire.
Hivi ingekuwa vipi ungapandisha vibe la burudani yako? Lipia kifurushi cha juu ya kifurushi chako cha sasa. Yaani ukipanda kutoka poa 